Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Wednesday, the 1st of June. I'm Derek Clark. I'm joined this morning by Johnny McFarlane. How are we doing, Johnny? Good, Derek. Good. Very, very, very nice day here in Glasgow this morning, so uh, that's that's a bonus. Fantastic. Yeah, you need to make the most of it, of course. Uh, we're well and truly in the summer season, but if you get a sunny day, then you need to uh, appreciate it, especially when you're up there. Up outside my window, grey skies, but... Hey, we'll crack on, talk all things Rangers, of course, as we always do. Right, before we do that, folks, just a bit of housekeeping. As you can see, the little ticker below, uh, we've got that great offer on the website still on. It's just uh, £6 for six months' worth of content. So it works out at just a pound a month. Uh, you pay your £6, and that's you sorted for half a year. So many of you are now subscribing, so thanks very much for doing so. And the feedback we're getting is, is superb. You're all enjoying the, the work that we're doing. So just head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details and as you can see uh, the little uh, uh, one football uh, uh, logo in the corner of your screen that is our sponsor of course the one football app it's totally free it's your one-stop shop for all your footballing needs and you can download it free of charge on android and iphone as you can see there just a, a whiz through what you can uh, expect to find all the latest news coming out from ibrox there's rangers review articles on there as well as well as that you can keep abreast of all that's going on in scottish football there's fixture lists as well and you can keep your eye uh, on what's going on down south also and further afield uh, across the continent as well as a superb app that one football uh, go and search it uh, wherever you get your apps from Okay, okay, Johnny, um, now, when we just went on air here, uh, the news broke that Cedric Eaton is no longer a Rangers player. Uh, the club have confirmed that he's joined Young Boys back in his homeland for an undisclosed fee. Um, there was uh, reported figures uh, doing the rounds a few days ago of around about £1.5 million, which is, for me, is a, a good bit of business. I, I don't think he was ever going to make it at Rangers. Did the job when he came in. Um, I think everyone remembers that goal against Lech Poznan uh, and he scored a, a vital goal, I'm sure, against uh, Motherwell in, in a comeback victory uh, and as Rangers marched towards the title um, the season before last. Um, what do you make of the news coming out? I don't think it's uh, all too surprising, is it? No, uh, probably a good deal for Rangers if that's indeed the price. The, the fee is obviously undisclosed, so we're not privy to how much it's, um, how much it's been at the moment. Uh, I think he cost around about 2.5 million. And let's be honest, Eric, he hasn't set the heather alight. I've never really been convinced from the get go with Itten. Uh, it's hard to really see what was pinpointed that he might bring. You know, he's not that physical in terms of Scottish football. He's kind of gangly, not a great touch, not particularly quick. You know, it's. <laughs> He's a player who is a good finisher, but outside of that, I, I I was never a huge fan of what he brought to the table. He didn't have a massive chance, never got a true run of games. But, you know, 49, 49 appearances for the club, nine goals. Some of those were important ones in the uh, 55 season. There's no doubt about that. But I was never really fully convinced in, in what he was bringing to the table. There was always the chat that, back in Switzerland, where he was very successful. There's no doubt about that, Derek. He played in a two, and that's just not the way Rangers play. They did look like at times that perhaps Steven Gerrard was going to go to a two this season towards the end of last season. Of course, he played Kemar Roof and Alfredo Morales up together as sort of two number nines against Celtic in the 4-1 win at Ibrox. And many of us here thought that was perhaps the next evolution in terms of getting more bodies in the box. But it, it didn't turn out that way and certainly hasn't been that way under Giovanni van Bronckhorst. And I just don't think Cedric Hipton was ever really at the races. When he was brought back from Germany in January, you thought, well, it's now or never for Cedric Eaton because he's got this opportunity with injuries. But ultimately, he, wasn't, he still wasn't really used, was he? He came in for two games, he didn't impress anyone. Just no. doesn't really. I just don't. I've got to be honest, Derek. I'm going to be brutally honest. I just don't think he's a good enough player for for Rangers Football Club. I just don't don't think he's got the skill set. As simple as that. Um, perhaps I'm doing him a disservice. Perhaps he'll go to another club and, and be a great success. 
He's already scored many goals in Switzerland before, so th- there's no doubt that he could go to young boy and, boys and, and be a success. But it just it was I just don't think he was ever going to be a player that worked out particularly well. He reminded me a lot, and I'll, I'll take you back to uh, a player of a bygone era of Eric Bo Anderson, who was oh, an Norwegian okay. striker who could who could finish, yeah, uh, and was quite quick. But he was he was pretty gangly and and kind of his first touch wasn't great technically wasn't good very similar to me um as a player um Itton's more physical obviously um but yeah. it's just that inability to kind of like kill a ball dead when you get it and we all know what ibrox is like it's unforgiven you know the fans have grown up with uh, the vast majority of fans obviously not maybe not the younger ones going back 10 years but the majority of fans who are who are there have grown up with some great players, and I think this is the the temperament is perhaps less suited to a guy who's who's not got it in terms of uh, the technical quality of being in the final third. That's just my take. Yeah, MMA King is even harsher than you, John. He says he doesn't rate him. He calls him a poundland Peter Crouch. Um, so so <laughs> there you go. Listen, it, it came. It, it it just wasn't the right fit, as you say, Johnny. And I think everyone would would wish him well. Um, it's a good move for him as well. Young boys are, are a good club, so um, he's still rated over there in his homeland. Of course, he has been called up whilst at Rangers in the Swiss uh, national team. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if he goes on and, and, and has, a, has a successful career over there. Um, but yeah, uh, good lad, and, and we wish him all the best. Um, one player who is uh, staying and sticking around, Johnny, is uh, Stephen Davis. Um, it was rumoured over the last few days he was going to be offered a uh, a one-year extension that was signed uh, yesterday evening. It's a, a further year, so his contract will expire uh, next summer. 37 years of age now. Uh, a club statement read that Rangers are today delighted to confirm midfielder Stephen Davis has signed a one-year extension to his Ibrox uh, contract. Uh, it goes on, Stephen Davis himself comments. He says he's absolutely delighted. Says it was a, a really important season for his last year, and to finish on a high of the Scottish Cup was important for the team and the group. And we want to try and kick on again next year. Now, um, what do you make of this uh, move? I've, now, I've seen a sort of mixed response, Johnny. Now, for yeah. me, I'll give you my personal viewpoint. I think it's a, a great move to keep him around. I think off the field, he's his uh, experience is uh, second to none. And for the young players coming coming through, there's no one better to look up to and learn from than Stephen Davis. Not only that, I think he can still cut it on the field. Um, I thought he's still fit as a fiddle. Um, and I think it, it's a no-brainer to, to keep him around. Um, what say you? I can see both sides of it, but I would have erred on the what Rangers have done, which is keeping him around because... If you if you're 100 percent honest and you look at his performances towards the end of the season when he came back into the side, he did look perfectly adequate. He looked the same old Stephen Davis that we that we all know and love. You know, he gives you that quality and calmness on the ball that very very few players have. And you wouldn't say based on those performances that this is a guy that's coming to the end that looks like he's shot. Some players have just got that physical fitness that they can continue on. And to me, Stephen Davis, he might not play. 35 games, it might only be 20 or 15 or whatever next season. But to have him kicking around the place, to have that quality to rely on, I don't think it's a bad thing to have in the squad. Now, all I would say about that, though, is it surely spells the end for someone like um, someone like Stephen Kelly coming through. You know, you've already got Kamara there, Lundstrom there, Jack there. That's four players in that sort of midfield base role and that's uh, a, f- a fair whack. So any kind of youngsters coming into that that area, you know, you've got Charlie McCann there. I think they're going to find it tough to get into the team. Um, but that's life at a big club. Um, but if you had a really, really talented young player there that was on the verge next season, I think there's an argument to say that, that, that you've got to start moving players on in certain positions. I mean, I'll be... Surprised if Alan McGregor comes back, for example. I think it's yeah. definitely time for Alan McGregor. If Alan McGregor also signs a new contract, um, I, I, I wouldn't agree with that based on his, his kind of season that he had. I think it's a perfect time with a Scottish Cup winning and a European final for Alan McGregor to call it a day. Yeah. Um, so I don't think all these players who are coming to the end of their contract should be kept. Uh, but, but Stephen Davis, 
I can see the logic in it. I do think it makes sense. But there has to be a longer term plan for bringing in some of these talented youngsters into the first team. Yeah. It's an interesting point on Stephen Kelly. Um, of course, he's been on loan at Salford, Johnny. Now, last year, he had a great pre-season. Uh, I spoke to him myself, I think it was around about January time, and he felt he, w- he was deserving of a chance. Stephen Ger- Gerrard felt other- otherwise. Can you see him? I guess Giovanni van Bronckhorst I hasn't really seen him uh, close up in person, although he did have a conversation and told him a loan move would be beneficial for the second half of the season. Mm. Like you say, he's got a year left on his deal, Stephen Kelly. Um, it's make or break, I think, for in, in the summer for for guys like him, I'd imagine. And um, it's hard to see a Rangers future. Would, would you go along with that? Yeah, I would at the moment, mate. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, because I think Stephen Kelly was deserving of more of a chance. Yeah. But listen, we don't watch him in training every day. These guys know what needs to be brought to the table to become a Rangers player. Giovanni Van Bronckhorst knows more than anyone what it takes to be a, a central midfielder for Glasgow yeah. Rangers. So you just have to trust that they are going to get that right. Um, everyone wants to see young players coming through from the academy and into that Rangers first team for a multitude of reasons. Um, so it's always disappointing when you get the sense that someone's not going to quite make it. But there's no reason to say he won't go on and have a terrific career. I think he's done pretty well in Salford by all accounts. Derek, yeah. don't think yeah. he's um, had any struggles down there. He's already... Had a great spell up at Ross County. I know from speaking to John Hughes, uh, uh, Big Yogi really, really rates him. Thinks he's a terrific player, ter- terrific professional. And, and actually, John Hughes told me that he, he thought that he could actually make it at Rangers. He does think that um, this was about a year ago, but he, he said, you know, in within two years, he can be our first choice Rangers midfielder if he keeps on uh, improving yeah. the way he is. It's just not happened. Um, perhaps it's best that he goes on and finds another club. But maybe not. Maybe he'll come in in pre-season and Giovanni Van Bronckers will take a close look at him and say, right, I fancy the look of this. And four midfielders, given the injury problems that Jack has, given the age of Davis, it's probably not enough. You probably do need five or six. Yeah. So I would maybe expect Charlie McCann, at the very least, to come into more football next year. He might be looking at 10 to 20 games in that base of midfield because simply the rest of the players that are in there, um, there's yeah. question marks about fitness and and, and 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 how often they can play. Listen, Glenn Kamara is another one signed a new deal, but I think there was an understanding when he signed that new deal. He wasn't going to see it out. That wasn't going to be the expected uh, scenario. Yeah, But Kamara didn't have the best of seasons last year. It was a bit up or down. Started to look better towards the end. Came on to a game. But uh, so you, you, you don't know what the situation with his future. I know there has been clubs sniffing about Glenn Kamara, not least uh, a couple of premiership clubs. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, lots of comments coming in. A lot of people concerned, uh, understandably so, with regards to contracts. We've got a piece coming out on the website shortly. Uh, I'm detailing um, when each player's contract ends and uh, whether discussions will need to be had or um, decisions made on, on the Rybrook's futures. This one's an interesting one from, from Ryan Stewart, a player we don't really talk about much, Johnny. James Sands, um, with regards to Stephen Davis signing that new deal, he says seems well down the pecking order. Yeah. To be fair, he did come on in that Europa League final. I think it was a surprise for many to see him come on and he slotted into that back three. Um, he is another one who's got a year on his loan deal. Rangers have that option to buy. What have you made of Sand so far? It's hard to judge it at this point in time. Do you reckon we'll see more of him next season? It's, uh, it, I think it's, he's an important utility player, Derek. Um, yeah. I didn't mention him in those four because I don't see him as sort of a starting base centre midfielder. Yeah. But I think what he can do is he can slot in midfield at the back or right back. So he's a great player to have in the squad as a backup if you're in yeah. a difficult situation. Uh, for example, right, I would like to see young Divine come in and be the number two to Tavernier next season and properly be given a bit of time uh, rotated in. Yeah. So that might be 10 games or whatever. But you know that if Tavernier gets injured, Divine's there and Sands is there. Zikowski is well, Sorry? The young Polish boy, uh, Zikowski, we've only seen him I don't know what's Danny. going on there. I don't know what's going on there. Um, <laughs> that, he's, he's just kind of disappeared off the radar, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, but 
I, I was, ve- you know, the, the Polish lad. Is okay, so apparently, he has- apparently he's injured. Johnny. He mentioned on Twitter he was injured. He'll be back for pre-season, but he's one that you, 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 you understandably forget about, don't you? Because you've, you've not seen anything of him. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. No. I mean, Zakowski when he's played, um, hasn't really made an impression on me. Uh, but I think Divine when he played against Hearts, I I was pretty impressed by what he brought to the table. Yeah. I, I liked the, really liked the look of him. I thought in that one game, he 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 gave me the sense that he was for putting a a stake in the in the ground and saying, "Look, yeah. I, I'm here and I want to be part of this." And again, you you know, you're always going to be have that slight bias towards young players coming through the academy. Um, Zukowski, I suppose we'll see. The big, the big question will be come the uh, the start of preseason whether or not he's in a position to actually um, really make that second spot at right back his own. I mean, Tavernier, he doesn't actually m- miss a lot of games. No, know, he doesn't. That throughout the, his career, so. Yeah, it's probably not the place you want to be number two, but I think Rangers have to make an effort if they've got these young players to get them into certain games. Also, James Tavernier can't... I don't think he can still be playing 55 games, 60 games a season, no. age 31, 32, 33. You know, you have to give him a wee bit of a break. It makes sense, especially if you've got a young talent there who's who's fit to come through. Yeah. In, in terms of James Sanzo, mate, I actually yeah. think he'll be useful for the squad. Yeah, I, I sort of tend to agree with you. Um, whether Rangers take up the option to buy next summer uh, remains to be seen, but I think you, you have a, a part to play uh, next year. There's no doubt about it. So many different uh, questions coming in here, Johnny. Now, there's one a bit harsh, I think, on Fashion Sakala. Um, MMA King wants Rangers to sell him. Not good enough uh, end product, a speed merchant. It's fair to say he needs a bit of work. I think that I, I think everyone would, would go along that uh those same lines, Johnny. Um, it needs a bit of coaching, but for me, I would I would be inclined to keep him around next season. I think his numbers, uh, his sort of games to to uh, conversion ratio in terms of getting goals and assists is pretty decent, uh, and he's a good option. He's like the joker you bring off off the bench. Um, for me, I'd, I'd 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 tend to keep him around, especially considering that Rangers are a bit light up front, as we've already mentioned. Nitin's away. For me, they need to bring in at least two strikers um, for next season. Um, would you be inclined to keep him around, Fashion Sakala? Um, I would keep him around. I would give him another year to see if you can get more out of him. Yeah. I think in terms of his goal contributions, Ryan Stewart's mentioned in this, um, you look at his assists and his goals, it's pretty good. It's actually really pretty good for a player who's not a first pick. Yes, Especially in the sort of premier premiership, he's um, he's delivered, I think, a, a reasonable return on that. The problem you've got with Fashion Sakala is that he's so infuriating. <laughs> he's the kind of player that would get a manager a sack because, yes, he can come on off, off the bench and turn the game. Oh, you've left us there, Johnny. Um... I uh, can't hear. We can't hear you. Um, sound issues there. Sorry, I, I hey. said. Um, yeah, he's he's also a player that um, can 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 cause real problems for teams. But then you can have games where he's absolutely not effective in the slightest. Now you look at the Europa League final. If there's one game that you want a player to come on and have a positive impact, is that one. And I thought he was absolutely murdered, Derek. You were in the stadium. Just every ball that went into his feet just bounced back off him. Yeah, and he's not making those runs in behind that defenders are terrified of because he's got that incredibly quick burst. Um, he needs to learn that. I mean, Alan McCoy, I think, uh, was uh, <laughs> is as frustrated as me by by some <laughs> of the things that he sees. And when Ali's in co commentary, he's like, "Well, it's one thing having the pace, but if you don't know what to do with it, and and too often Sakala for me isn't making the most of it now." Here's the thing I think is a slight problem with him. He's very good in the air. People don't realise. Yeah. And uh, it was something Craig Vickers, one of our tactical writers, picked up very early on in his career at Rangers, that he's winning a good amount of aerial challenges. But that's not his game, right? He might be decent in the air, and 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 that's fine. And that's, that's a big bonus in Scottish football. Yeah. But you're not a target man, mate. You know, you're an in-behind, ball-over-the-top, lightning-quick, last-line-of-the-defender striker. 
You know, I, I, to me, he's almost playing too much like trying to be like an Alfredo Morelos clone when he should always, for me, be looking at how can I get turned and away from a through ball. And it's frustrating when you see a player with that level of pace just not kind of grasping what his game's all about and how he can be best effective. But there's no doubt if you put the ball in front of him in the box, he'll finish it. He's a good finisher. I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not going to say anything otherwise. I've, I've been impressed from that that point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly, I think I think he's he's worth uh, keeping around. Um, and good luck at Roy Mackay and, and Geo for um, in pre-season. Hopefully, they can uh, sort of fine tune his his uh, skills and talent and make him a better striker. Before we go, uh, Johnny, I just wanted to touch on this. Um, Michael Beale, of course, yeah. uh, in the news uh, recently, um, comment coming in here, thoughts on Michael Beale becoming the QPR manager. He should be announced today. His first job as a sort of standalone boss. He's going to leave Stephen Gerrard. be interesting to see how he gets on at Aston Villa without his uh, right-hand man. I think, he's going to, I think he's going to tear it up at Loftus Road, Johnny. I think it'll be a, a, a right good success. Jury is out, of course. He, he, he's not been a a manager in his own right before, but um, I'm intrigued to find out how he gets on down there. Yeah, I think he's going to walk into a decent club as well, you know. I think yeah. Mark Warburton uh, did a very good job there, underrated, and was very unlucky to be let go. He's built a very solid foundation for Michael Beale to, to improve. QPR were perennial strugglers in that championship, but Warburton very much has st- steadied the ship, and, and let me tell you, three, four months ago, it looked like they were heading towards the Premier League. They had a bit of a collapse yeah. at the end. It was unfortunate. I know that there's there's been quite a few injuries. Uh, a couple of players dropped out of form at the wrong time. And, and unfortunately for Mark, he lost his job on the back of that. But he had them playing really good football. They're a joy to watch, as every Warburton team is. And uh, they're very much stabilised now. So if you've got Michael Beale going in, who, who's a real tactical brain, I think he'll be he'll be primed to take them on to to another level because it's all there for him. The, the work has been done. You know the hard graft of establishing yeah. them as, a, as 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 less of a yo-yo team or, or a team that was struggling against relegation um, has has been put in place. And, and now uh, for Beal going in, uh, it's a great opportunity. I think uh, Michael Beal is from that neck of the woods, isn't he? He's from the he's from the sort of southern. End of the country, London. so yeah, he yeah. to be back down near her home. Um, yeah. I know he did move down to Birmingham eventually. He was, his family were still up here for quite a while after he moved down to, yeah, to, to Aston Villa, but they're, they're presumably going to be moving again because I know they were settled in, in Birmingham and now they'll be back down to London. Um, but I always really rated Michael Beale, Derek. I think he's a top football operator, really intelligent, articulate guy. Yes, I've listened to all his podcasts. That he's done, he's done a, a good number. He's very open about his life, his journey, what he wants to be as a coach. He seems like he's got that really, really important balance between a tactical brain, but what the um, business people call EQ, emotional quotient, the ability to manage people on the basis of um, personality, individuals. You know, the the, the things that, that managers in the past, like a Fergie or a Brian Clough, was brilliant at doing. You know, one guy needs an arm round them, one guy needs to be screamed at, one guy needs something else entirely, a more cerebral approach perhaps. I think Michael Beale's got that ability to to, to know what people need. And yeah. um, I think he'll do very, very well. I mean, the testimony that comes out when he was at Rangers about his abilities in the coaching field was absolutely remarkable. It was never a player who said anything negative about his training sessions. In fact, quite the opposite. They're all They're all raving about him. Um, so I think you'll do a I think you'll do a good job. But but listen, Derek, we've seen many many times very very good assistants, highly rated coaches go into the big number one role and they can't cope or they struggle. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Michael Beale is going to be like that. But uh, you, you just don't know. Yeah. Well, the best of the lot was it was at Rangers, of course, when Walter Smith took over from, from Graham Souness. If he can emulate even. Uh, a fraction of, of what Walter achieved and you know, beyond to uh, a great career as, as a manager. And, and I know as well, Kevin Thompson uh, left his job as Kelty Hearts yeah. uh, boss yesterday, Johnny, um, looking to pursue his career and, and push on. He, he said it'll be interesting to see where he ends up next. I know there's a number of vacancies uh, 
and around Scottish football and, and even English football as well. Can you see him move, moving up the sort of managerial ladder? I think so. I think so. I think he's done really well at Kelly Hearts. I think they won the league yeah. by over 20 points. Yeah. Never struggled at all. Uh, okay, you know, it's not the strongest league in the world, but yeah, you have to win it. And yeah. he did that well. Thought it was a slightly classless... Yes, yeah, yeah. like guilty heart. Sort of, yeah. he's had his eye elsewhere quite clearly yeah. for some, you know, like pff, I don't know if that was necessary. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't think that was a great bit of PR by Kelty Hearts, I have to say. But the last they're a club going places. It's quite clear they're pumping money in. They want to get higher up the food chain and and, and all the best to them. And I'm sure that they'll get a, a very good manager in because it's a it's a club that are that are clearly ambitious about what they want to do for the future. Yeah. Kevin Thompson, it's fairly straightforward, wants to move to full-time football management yeah, and doesn't want to be hanging about at a club where he's not going to get that, I think. So yeah. uh, it's a it's a bold move by Kevin, um, but I think probably the right one. And he's got his academy to fall back on if there's a wee, if there's a wee break. I know he's, he loves coaching, so if there's a wee break from that, then, you know, he's got he's got... Plenty to keep him occupied. So uh, yeah. I think uh, Kevin Thompson's a, a guy whose star is on the up. Yeah. And uh, one way or another, will end up in a full time club in either Scotland or England. Um, I, I, he's always been a, a leader. I, I've said before, I've talked about Kevin Thompson as a player on the pitch. He wasn't really my cup of tea. It's not a player that I look back on with the same level of fondness that a lot of people do. Um, but he never gave anything less than 110% for Rangers. Yeah. And, 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 and his mentality was superb. Yeah, uh, struggled through a lot of injuries, and I think if he hadn't gone through the injuries, he would have been a really, really magnificent player. I mean, everyone said when he was coming through as a kid, you know, people talk about Scott Brown, but the better player is Kevin Thompson. Uh, yeah. But unfortunately, he had he had some really, really bad injuries, and still had a great, great career. Yeah. So um, I think he'll he'll do well. Yeah, yeah, we wish him all the best in whatever his next move is. Okay, folks, that'll do us here. Thanks to everyone for interacting with the show as ever. Uh, just a wee reminder uh, of that great offer we've got on the website just now, just £6 for six months' worth of content. Um, so uh, you pay your £6, actually sorted for half a year. Just head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. And we'll be back again tomorrow, but until then, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday.